Hello and welcome to this Astranti YouTube video where we are going to be looking at standard deviations and this is one of many videos that we are going to be posting, some relating to the objective test syllabus, some relating to the case studies and also some relating to general exam technique. And we're going to look at standard deviations because it is a prevalent risk measurement topic for your P1 and P2 to syllabus and if you enjoy this video please like the video and subscribe at the bottom of the screen or visit the website www.astranti.com so let's begin talking about standard deviations now standard deviations are one of the most commonly used measures of risk in the SEMA syllabus and essentially standard deviations look at calculating the possible potential outcomes of a decision and then calculating just how wide ranging those decisions are in comparison with the average. So in short, we're looking at how much potential outcomes of a project or of a decision deviate from the average outcome of that project or decision. And the wider the range of potential outcomes, the riskier the project becomes, the riskier the project is for us to implement. So I'm going to use a very simple example to explain what this means. So let's consider the following figures. We've got two projects and they've got the following potential outcomes. Project number one has an average outcome of £100 profit. It has a best possible outcome of £100,000 profit and a worst possible outcome of a £100,000 loss. And project number two also has an average outcome of £100 profit, but this time the best possible outcome is £1,000 in profit and the worst possible outcome is a £1,000 loss. So based on what we've discussed so far, take a moment to think which project you think is the riskier project. Well, we can see that they both have the same average outcome. They both have an average outcome of £100 profit. But remembering that what we're looking for in standard deviations is how much the potential outcomes of a project deviate from the average outcome of a project, we can look at these figures and say that whilst they have the same average, the deviation of potential outcomes from the average is far greater in the first project and therefore it is the riskier project to undertake. And this is simple enough to do when you have two projects with the same average outcome, but that is not always the case. So what we're going to do now is look at an example. And we are a management accountant and we're working at a toy manufacturer and this toy manufacturer makes play houses. And we've got two potential new projects to undertake. And these are the classic model which is a very classic style playhouse, very rudimentary in its design. And then we have the vintage model, much more premium model, fitted with flower pots and with thatched roofings. And unfortunately, because of resourcing, because of strains on our factory floor and timing, etc., we cannot create both models. We'd like to make both models, but unfortunately we cannot. So we need to look at these two different models now and decide which one is going to provide us with the most profit, with the best possible return, and then look at which one is the riskier project. So let's look at the potential outcomes. We can see here on the screen that the classic model has five potential outcomes, a net present value of 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14,000 pounds, the respective probabilities of each outcome by the side. And the vintage model also has five potential outcomes. 
And the first thing we need to do when calculating our standard deviation is to calculate the expected value. And for all intents and purposes, the expected value is the average outcome. But we are faced with a problem here. We can't simply add up our five different outcomes and divide them by five because there are different probabilities. The £10,000 outcome is three times as likely as the £11,000 outcome. And so what we have to do is find our weighted amount. And this is the potential outcome multiplied by its probability because it's more likely to occur. If you are confused over the term weighted amount, please do not worry. You don't need to know the specific science behind all this. You just need to know how to calculate the weighted amount. And it's simply calculated by multiplying the potential outcome by its probability. So first thing to do is to multiply 10,000 pounds by 0 0.3 to take into account the fact that the 10,000 pound outcome is more likely than the other outcomes. And so it needs to have a higher weighted amount attributed to it. And when we multiply 10,000 by 0 0.3, we get 3,000 pounds. We do the same thing for the 11,000 pound outcome, this time multiplying it by 0 0.1, giving us 1,100. And we repeat the process for the other three options. And then once we have our weighted amounts, we can total our weighted amount to find our expected value, which is 11,900 pounds. And we repeat the process for the vintage model, giving us an expected value of 13,300 pounds. And so what this means to us as management accountants is that if we are just looking for the most profitable project, then we need to select the vintage model. And we select the vintage model because it has the highest expected value of £13,300. But this section is not just about calculating the most profitable outcome. It's about calculating the risk. We still don't know which of these two models is the riskier option. If the range of potential outcomes is far greater than the average for the vintage model than it is for the classic model, then the vintage model will be the riskier model. And therefore, the fact that it has a higher expected value may not necessarily mean it's still the better project to undertake. And so we have to move on to step number two, which is to find the difference between the expected value and the different outcomes. Because as we've already alluded to in this video, standard deviations is all about finding how far the potential outcomes deviate from the average, the average being the expected value. So we'll focus on the classic model first. We have our five potential outcomes and we have our expected value. And so we need to find out how much each potential outcome deviates from the expected value. And what we do is we deduct the expected value from the potential outcome. So if we deduct 11,900 from 10,000, we get minus 1,900 pounds. We repeat the process for the 11,000 pound outcome we get minus 900 pounds and we repeat the process for all the potential outcomes. We move on to the third step, which is to square the answers. And we have to square the answers because we have to remove those negative figures. And when we multiply negative figures by negative figures, we remove the negativity. They become positive numbers. So we square those deviations so we multiply minus 1,900 pounds by 1,900 pounds, giving us 
£3,610,000. And as you can see, I have repeated the process for all the potential outcomes. And once we have done this, we now need to multiply them by the probability. Because we used our probability earlier when calculating our expected value, but we have so far ignored it with this part of the calculation. And we still need to factor in that some of these outcomes are more likely than the others. So we have to find the weighted amount of our deviation. So we multiply that deviation squared by the respective probabilities, which you can already see on your screen. And so if we multiply 3,610,000 by 0 0.3, we get the weighted amount, which is 1,083,000. Read the process for the £11,000 outcome, where we take 810,000 and multiply it by 0 0.1, we get £81,000. And again, for the other potential outcomes. And now we calculate the total of our weighted amounts which comes to £2,290,000. And the final step is to square root the total. And this gives us our standard deviation. And the square root of £2,290,000 is 1,513 pounds 27 pence. Now we move over to the vintage model and we repeat the process. So we've got our potential outcomes, we've got our expected value, we need to find the deviation from that expected value by deducting the expected value from the potential outcome. We square the deviation to get rid of those negative numbers, multiply it by the probability to give us our weighted amount, which we then total and we then square root that total to give us the standard deviation of the vintage model, which is £2,100. But we're faced with a problem. We cannot compare the expected values of the two projects because the expected values are different. You cannot compare Usain Bolt with a Bugatti Veyron when you are asking which is the fastest because they are two completely different things. But what you can do is compare Usain Bolt with the other 100 meter sprinters and compare the Bugatti Veyron with the other supercars and then contrast just how much faster Usain Bolt is compared with other sprinters with just how much faster the Bugatti Veyron is compared with other cars. And to do this, we use something known as the coefficient. And the coefficient is calculated by dividing the standard deviation by the expected value. And this gives us a percentage. And this percentage is then something that we can contrast. We've brought both projects in line and now we can compare them directly. So let's look at our figures. We've got our classic model and we've got our vintage model. And we've got the standard deviation of 1,513 pounds 27 pence for the classic model and 2,100 pounds for the vintage model. Now we cannot compare the standard deviations alone because this is just a representation of how much it deviates from the average. And without knowing the average, we can't compare them. We have our expected values. And again, we can't compare them because they are different and we can only compare them directly when they are the same. So for some context, I'll return to my Usain Bolt and Bugatti Veyron example. We cannot compare Usain Bolt and a Bugatti Veyron simply by knowing how fast they are over a particular distance. Likewise, we cannot compare the time difference between another sprinter and Usain Bolt and 
the time difference between another car and a Bugatti Veyron because the timings will be different and the expected value which will be Usain Bolt and the Bugatti Veyron speed will be different. But what we can do is calculate a percentage of just how much faster Usain Bolt is compared with the other sprinters and compare that percentage with just how much faster the Bugatti Veyron is compared with other cars. So we need to calculate our coefficient. So if we divide 1,513 pounds, 27 pence, by the expected value, which is 11,900 pounds, we get the coefficient of the classic model, which is 12.72%. Repeat the process for the vintage model, which gives us a coefficient of 15.79%. And so what we can read from that is that the vintage model is the riskier because it has a greater range of outcomes compared with the average, which is what I mentioned at the very, very start of this section was all about what standard deviations were. It's about comparing the range of potential outcomes with the average outcome. And so as management accountants, we now know that the vintage model is the riskier model to produce. And we need to feed that back to management. Now, if we know that management are very risk averse, they're most likely to want to take the classic model because even though it has a lower expected value, we can be more sure of achieving that expected value because the coefficient is smaller. The range of potential outcomes compared to the average is smaller. However, we know that our managing director is not risk averse. She's very much a risk seeker. She's built this toy manufacturing company up from the ground from nothing. She likes to take risks. And so we know that actually she's more likely to want to go with the vintage model because despite it being riskier, it provides a better potential outcome. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and you have found it useful. I hope you now have a good idea of how to calculate a standard deviation and also how to calculate the coefficient of the deviation, which is very important when you have two projects that are not of a similar size. And if you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe at the bottom of your screen and please visit the Astranti website for more information on the SEMA syllabus and more information on videos such as the one that I have just presented.